Hi, and, uh, and welcome. So, it's hard to find time around uh, uh, taking care of children and what to make uh, lectures. So, uh, a lot of them end up having to be at midnight. Uh, so, uh, this is a segment uh, that I ran for my uh, differential equations class, and I call it... So this is a little bit different here, uh, so I'm going to be a little bit more thorough and telling you <coughs> how to code and uh, and do all that. So today we're going to go through and we're going to um, uh, just code up Heron's formula. Uh, it's easy enough and, um, and it shows how to use variables, how to make a for loop, and how to, and I'll also show you how to plot uh, a simple gra uh, graph. And um, yeah. It should only take a, about half an hour or so. In any case, um, let's go ahead and get started. So I'll get a screen recording going and press record. There we go. All right, and uh, let's go. Okay, so uh, here I'm gonna write a comment just to tell myself what this is. And so this is Heron's formula for computing uh, square roots. Okay, uh, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a variable. And this has to have a name, and I'm just going to call it s, just like I had in the lecture. Um, so this is number we're trying to take as a square root of. I'm just going to say it's two. I don't have to put this variable in here, but this will let allow us to be a little bit more flexible. And so, uh, so I'm going to say we are computing the square root of s. Okay. So, I now we need an initial guess. Um, I'm making a new variable. I'm gonna say initial guess. I don't know uh, any real good initial guess uh, given a random number, so uh, or an arbitrary number. So I'm just gonna choose uh, s as the starting point. Uh, so we know at very least what we input. We put in two, and so using s here. Seems as good as any, but I can adjust this later and we can use a different initial value. So, um, so now I, I'm going to be making a lot of redundant variables. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we can make it more efficient later. Okay, but you remember, uh, basically Heron's formula takes uh, um, S and it divides it by uh, xn, and then uh, we add xn, and uh, and then after that we take the average, and then we divide it by two to take the average of the two, and uh, that's how Heron's formula works. And so uh, our initial guess is going to be our x naught. So I'm just going to put that x naught. Uh, you know, instead of saying initial guess, I'm just going to write x naught. Um, do I want to say x naught? Sure. Um, well, let's just say x, because um, truly we're not going to, this first round, uh, we're just going to keep replacing the x, and I'll show you how to do uh, more than that. So uh, so that's my initial guess, and so I'm going to make a loop, and I'm going to say i goes from 1 to however many times we want to go, as so I'll say 20. Um, and now I'm going to put an end, uh, and now this is everything that happens inside of here, I, I, it, is repeated uh, from 1 to 20 times, and if I need to use this index, and I won't need it here, um, I can. Um, there's also a while loop that I could use, but 4 comes up easy, is easy enough to use for now. Um, uh, so here I can use index if I need to as a variable. Um, okay, so now I'm going to replace x with 1 half of uh, times x plus s divided by x. Uh, and I'm putting a semicolon here. Notice I put a semicolon in each one of these lines. I don't have to. Uh, if I just do a line break, uh, that will do the same thing. Uh, but what changes is that I, it'll end up showing up in this display in the command window uh, if I don't put a semicolon. And when you have 
a for loop running 20 times, having this variable show up 20 times is kind of frustrating. Um, in any case, uh, so at the end of the day, I'm just going to say display, and I'm going to tell us to display x. That's when we actually want to see it. And so there you go. That's, a form, that's the algorithm for making square roots of here. We have two. So then, when you want to test it out, you press run, and we're going to see the results pop up here. Uh, all right, change folder. I was working in a different folder than where the file was, and so MATLAB wants me to move. So change folder. Okay. Well, there we go. At the end of the day, it gave us this, and let's ask uh, MATLAB what square root of x is. If you have random things you want to try, or you know, you can just go and plug in the command window. Uh, oops, <laughs> not square root of x, but square root of two. Uh, square root of two is going to give me 1.4142. Okay, exactly what we had here. If I want to see more, uh, I can no more numbers. I'm going to change the format long. Now I can try that again. So what is x? gives me that, and let's see, square root of, of 2 uh, is that, and how close are we? Well, it looks like with 20 iterations, we actually got pretty uh, as much as MATLAB's willing to show here. So that's a, that's pretty good, not bad. You could do this uh, in an afternoon if you had to. Okay, now let, let's see it actually uh, converge as a sequence. And so for that, we're going to have to make a whole uh, vector of, uh, of values. And so here, that's where we're going to change it up, and we're going to see um, what happens when you use uh, what we'll call a vector. Um, I'm going to do a kind of cheaty vector. Uh, this isn't something uh, you should do too often. Um, but I'm basically going to say, uh, hmm, should I do that? No, let me show it to you proper. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and make uh, a zero vector. So I'm making uh, a vector of zeros. Um, so uh, zero take, it will give you a matrix of zeros. So for instance, if I do zero, two, three here, or say zeros, two, comma, three, it gives me a vector that has two rows and three columns of all zeros. What we want to do is we want to make uh, just a row of these. And so we're going to have one row and um, let's say 20. Uh, we're going to run 20 iterations, right? OK, so now I, my x1, I'm just going to declare as s. So my, my first initial point. Uh, the index for all vectors starts at 1, not 0. So we don't say x0, we say x1, right? And since we already have 1 in here, I'm going to start index of 2. And now it goes to say at x at i, xi, yeah, xi, uh, it should be the same thing, but I put i minus 1, and I put i minus 1, i minus 1 here. So what's going on there is if I say, um, let's make a, a vector um, x, uh, say 1, uh, yeah, let's say y equals uh, say 1, 2, 3. So this is making a row vector in MATLAB. Uh, if I want to call uh, the second entry, I do y2. If I want to call the third entry, I put y3. And since I'm doing y here, each iteration, y is going to increase, going from 2 to 3, all the way up until it gets to 20. And so I, I'm just calling each one of these guys. Uh, x, we know, is a 20 length vector, uh, a row vector. And so I'm calling each one of these guys, and then I'm instituting it like that. Uh, now display isn't going to work for us anymore, um, but plot would. Uh, so there's this handy thing in MATLAB that you can do. You can do one colon one comma say ten, and it gives you a row vector of ten of length ten, incrementing by one. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it I'm going to make a figure, and I'm going to tell it to plot, and I'm going to say. Uh, plot 1 from 1 to 20, and then we're going to uh, put x there. So this is uh, going to be our uh, quote x-axis, and this is going to be our quote y-axis. Maybe I chose the variables kind of weird. I'm going to put a semicolon here, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. And uh, and now if I push play, uh, I get an error. What is my error? Uh, oh, I put 0 instead of zeros. All right, no big deal. All right, there we go. Now just push play. And what do we get? 
There we go. Okay. So I uh, I get uh, my x values starts up here and goes down here and uh, and then sort of levels out as it gets to 1.41 something. All right. That looks pretty cool. Uh, but let's say I, I don't, I mean, all these lines here aren't, are meaningless for a sequence. I, MATLAB is just trying to connect whatever it sees and to make some sort of nice line plot. Uh, what I can do if I want to change that is I can change the, uh, I can put it over there and it'll give me little circles, I think. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, so it gives me little circles. That's a little bit more meaningful. Okay, so it looks like we get pretty close within, say, one, two, three iterations. And then after that, we refine to four, and uh, so it's already saying 1.414, and then after all that, it just stays pretty flat, stays pretty close. So that looks like what I would call a convergent sequence. Of course, I mean, like, we know it actually does converge, um, but just visually, you can't ever say a sequence converges because you don't know what it'll do uh, for really large values. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm just seeing a trend here, and it looks like it's going to work out. Okay, and if you want to see uh, all the values of x, I just put here, uh, x. That's not really that nice of a display. I uh, remember it's a, a row vector, and so it's trying to list everything out horizontally. Uh, you can actually make MATLAB transpose your vector if you put an apostrophe on it. And there we go. Uh, so. We can see uh, very quickly, we go from 2 to 1.5 to 1.4166666, and that's how much we computed by hand. Then after that, it goes to 1.414, which is excellent, and it's 2, 1, uh, good. And then it looks like after that, we gain uh, another, what, 3, 4? Uh, uh, we gain another 5 digits, and so that's pretty quick. And then after that, so after about here, I would stop you. I mean, that's a pretty uh, accurate answer. Uh, so Heron's formula seems to work out pretty well uh, for finding uh, square roots. Anyway, so yeah, so that's the introduction. That gets you uh, some MATLAB um, experience. So we have a variable in here. Uh, we have um, made a vector. And then we filled the vector in, uh, starting with x1 and s. And then after that, we just use this iterative for to, uh, of a for loop. And, uh, and then finally, uh, we saw how to plot in two different ways. So there you go. Uh, that's uh, Heron's formula. And um, yeah, that was pretty fun. OK. Um, so I guess I should talk a little bit about how to get uh, MATLAB. And, um, and so, uh, for my students, uh, this isn't going to really apply to much anybody else. Um, let's see. Boop. Let's put everything here. Ignore my ridiculous number of pins. Uh, and uh, let's take a look. So, basically, um, USF uh, software. Right, uh, so uh, if, if you go to the University of South Florida, and a lot of universities do this, um, so at uh, Vanderbilt, I think it was university, uh, it's like the software store, and if uh, I think University of Florida had something similar. Um, but yeah, basically go there, do a search for MATLAB, and uh, click MATLAB, and uh, if you're faculty, staff, or students, um, there's a site-wide license. And uh, you just have to do special requests, send you to MATLAB's website. It's not like you're actually talking to anybody. You fill out a, a couple forms, and then today you can download uh, MATLAB, which is, you know, uh, industry standard software for doing uh, mathematics. And so, um, yeah, and yeah, that'll that'll get you there. Um, so, yeah, anything else you want to say? Uh, yeah, no, I, I think that's good for a one-on-one lesson. Um, anyway, so I'll see you next time. I, and next time we're going to talk about uh, doing um, a Taylor series uh, using the symbolic toolbox. So, all right, see you in a bit.